Welcome to Intermediate German Grammar, presented by the German Studies Program at Elon University. This video is part two of a five-part series on noun and pronoun function. If you haven't watched the first video on subject function, you might want to do that now. After having looked at subjects in the first video, now let's look at direct objects. As mentioned in the first video in this series, it's a good idea to locate the verbs first when trying to understand the meaning of a sentence. Those are marked in orange on your screen. By the way, you can tell that these sentences are in the active because of the verb formation. Hat gegründet is an active verb construction. Most textbooks will say that the subject does the action and the direct object is the person or thing the subject does the action to. In a minute, I'll tell you why that explanation needs modification, but for now, let's stick with it. In sentences in the active, the subject is the person who does or did that action. In this example, it's Prince Rupert. The direct object here is the thing he founded, namely the University of Heidelberg. Direct objects go into the accusative case, whose article endings are listed here. Remember that some articles take the same endings as der, die, and das, while others take the same endings as ein and eine. If you need a refresher on which words take which endings, just do a quick search for der words and ein words. It can be useful to identify direct objects because German sentences often begin with something that isn't the subject. It's common to find sentences like this one in German. If you accidentally overlook the accusative case marker den, you might think that the subject of the sentence is the market. That will lead to confusion when you encounter the verbs kann and finden, because you'll wonder what the market can find. If, on the other hand, you catch the accusative case marker den, you will realize that the market is the direct object, and that the subject is man. Then you'll see that one can find, man kann finden, the marketplace in Munich around the corner from the town hall. One final point. A minute ago I said that most textbooks will tell you that the subject does the action, and the direct object is the person or thing the subject does the action to. That explanation works for sentences in the active, but not when you're dealing with sentences in the passive. Because in the passive, the subject of the sentence has the action done to it. That's the whole point of the passive. That's why passive exists. So instead of the explanation used in most textbooks, I prefer the more technical terms agent and goal. Agent refers to the person who does the action. In other words, the person who has agency. Goal refers to the person or thing the action is directed to. In sentences in the active, the agent is rendered as the subject and goes into the nominative, and the goal is rendered as the direct object and goes into the accusative. In sentences in the passive, on the other hand, the goal is rendered as the subject and goes into the nominative. The agent is given in a prepositional phrase, as you see here. There is no direct object. Thinking in terms of agent and goal will help you see the relationships among nouns more clearly. That concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit us on the web or follow us on Facebook or Twitter.